Anastasia Palaszczuk remains defiant as rumours swirl about her leadership of the party and, of course, the yes and no campaigns go full throttle with their publicity campaigns. Joining me at the desk from Bondi Partners is Peter McGoran. Good morning, Peter. How are you? Good morning, Tim. Excellent. No matter what the circumstances, Anastasia Palaszczuk was never going to go quietly. No, and you've got to give her credit. She mm. stared down the plotters. She uh, marked. It's definitely a plot, going on. <laughs> Yes, by ambitious mm. uh, cabinet ministers, but she's retained the support of the people who matter in the, you know, the power brokers of the Labor Party in Queensland. Um, so she's there till the next election and will be a formidable opponent to a revitalised Liberal National Party opposition. Because a week or so ago, it was almost. Oh. You know, the, the, the subject was almost Anastasia Palaszczuk will be leaving and it's when. Exactly. But she dug the hole for herself. She brought in strict new juvenile crime laws, uh, which a Conservative Premier in Queen New South Wales, for instance, would never have the courage to do. But she got the civil libertarians offside. She got the victims of crime offside. So how she quite achieved that is beyond me. Then when there's talk about her... Uh, not being focused enough on the job. She goes off to the Melfi Coast and then when she's there, she says she's had health problems. So everybody thought she was preparing the ground for an exit. She's back, she's in charge and she's going to go full steam ahead. And remember, she's from the right-wing faction mm. and the left-wing faction have the majority, but she's lucky the left-wing can't agree on one candidate to oppose her. It's amazing what a couple of Aperol spritz on the Amalfi Coast can do, <laughs> Pete. Um, now, uh, the campaigns, the yes and the no campaigns are flying into Ooh. a blitz over Ooh. the next few weeks because we're four weeks away, of course, from the referendum. What did you make of the impact of Marcia Langton's outburst? Well, I, I wouldn't say that she has single-handedly destroyed the yes campaign, but she's cost them vital time. The whole week was lost to Marsha Langton's uh, accusations that the no case, as, as she has now said, not, not the no voters, was racist and stupid. So there's only four weeks left. Every day counts when you're in a negative polling position. Mm. The case is not lost for the yes uh, campaign yet, but it's looking dire. Qantas... How much should they be held to account over what has gone on? Alan Joyce is now gone, but the High Court has found that they illegally sacked 1,700 workers during that COVID period. The hubris of Alan Joyce and Qantas still leaves me astounded, Tim. The, the federal court single judge found that Qantas had illegally sacked the workers. The full appellant court, of the federal court, found they had illegally sacked the workers workers, and instead of then negotiating a settlement or eating humble pie, they then go to the High Court, which unanimously confirms the earlier court uh, jurisdiction's decision. They're in a world of pain. They've got the ACCC breathing down their necks, seeking quarter of a billion dollars penalty, which seems to me to be extremely excessive uh, for selling uh, f uh, tickets for flights that weren't available. Um, so I, I don't know how you reset, Qantas. It's going to be a long, long road back. It's a real flesh wound, isn't it, to the people of Australia because, you know, this long-term advertising campaign of Peter Allen's famous song, I Still Call Australia Home, with choirs on hills. And then for them to see... I'm talking about the Australian public here. Just for them to see the way that Australians are being treated, Australian workers are being treated by an organisation like that, it cuts deep. Uh, correct. And and I, I, I think that tug of the heartstrings is gone, unfortunately. Although, be fair, Tim, in the last decade or two, if you could get a better commercial deal with another airline, even the choirs mm. wouldn't have persuaded you to pay more for Qantas. So they have had to be competitive, but they still had this reservoir of an identity, a brand certainty uh, that stretched over decades that's gone. Uh, it's just another airline now. Yeah, the next song might be Go to Rio or something like that. Now, what is the significance turning internationally, uh, in your eyes, of uh, Kim Jong-un and Vladimir Putin and this... Uh, Partnership. Well, th that was a sight to make your skin crawl, mm. wasn't it, Tim? Because they're the two butchers of modern political history. I, I think it's overstated. I don't think North Korea can will will, will turn is is a game changer for the Ukrainian war. And um, I think North Korea has been already supplying Russia with as much armaments as possible, given that they are a major client of the Russian military. But 
Kim Jong-un is so paranoid, he will want to retain as much of the military hardware as possible. I think this was a very symbolic meeting, given that who, what world leader goes to Russia these days, Tim? You've got a President Assad of Syria, mm. a butcher, a North Korean pre, uh, leader, butcher, and Xi Jinping of China, who is equivocal about the relationship anyway. So, no, this, this was theatre. Oh, and the clapping, I mean, those pictures, it's honestly, uh, if it wasn't real, it'd be laughable. Yeah. That's, the, that's the truth of the matter of North Korea. Uh, but finally, let's lighten the subject. The mighty, mighty Spring Carnival starts today at Royal Randwick as the chairman of the Australian Turf Club. It's an exciting day. Oh, very much so. The, the horse flesh, where do you start, Tim? Mm. The, the, there's about six sprinters racing in what in the race called the shorts that are, the, the, that are auditioning to go into the Everest. Because remember... The Everest is owned by 12 slot holders. Yep. Only about six are already filled. So uh, very, very exciting. Great horses. Magnificent entertainment. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see which of those horses will pop up because <laughs> if the, whatever horse wins that, if it's not already... Because Marzu obviously is in that race. It's already yeah. in the Everest. But we'll have everything covered in Racing Dreams. Good to see you, Peter. Thanks, Tim.